that's gonna stink. I might have left just a little bit of rubber on the pavement right there. Ah, oh, that's funny. The speedometer has a red line on it. It red lines at 70 miles an hour. <laughs> that's good to know. Well, I didn't get any stutter at all, and I pretty well put my foot to the floor. Took her up to, uh, I don't know, 75 miles an hour or thereabouts. I've been messing with the uh, ignition on that Mustang quite a little bit. I tried putting an HEI coil in it. That was a complete fail. I don't know if I just got a bad unit. I think I probably did, some Chinese garbage. So I put the original back in and it's running okay with the points, but I suspect that I've got a little bit of a weak spark problem. I feel like I'm getting an incomplete burn. And even though I've got the carburetor leaned out quite a ways, I've got black carbon buildup on those spark plugs. So what I'm gonna do is uh, put on this here Pertronics D130700 and it's 0.6 ohm coil flamethrower. So we're gonna give that a go and just kind of see what changes. Uh, I suspect that the, that the points probably need some adjustment. I have not checked the dwell and I like having a, a points-based distributor on the shelf in case I need it. But I'm thinking that I'd probably rather run this electronic unit. So we're gonna give it a go and see what happens with it. Dang it! I hate it when I do that. I left the wrench on the on the engine. <laughs> Not even close. Uh, yeah, it didn't stand a chance. <laughs> What's on the agenda today? Putting a new distributor in. New distributor. New distributor. The other one was not fitting, right? I think the other one was giving me a weak spark. That's my theory, anyway. So I would say we're up around 15. <laughs> well, it likes it up there. Yeah. You need to check it really without the vacuum on it though. Right there, it's almost that's running about 20. Well Kind of curious to see what that does running that high. Might have to turn down the mechanical. Have you spark that advanced? Maybe you want to move the valve tiny again? No, the uh, the distributor has a mechanical advance built into it. And but and so this one will advance probably 25 degrees or so. You're saying it's a little high, and that'll make it high on the upper end. So that's right. To make it not advance itself so much. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I hit 30, but I got 20 degrees retard in it. That's, so, go, that's going up to 50, but it sounds good. It's time to take it out and see what she does. Sounds a lot better. Right out of the gate, it didn't try to die on me. It starts up clean and smooth. It feels good. We're still running on choke. The car's not warmed up at all. It feels good. It feels good. Very responsive. I'm getting no hesitation. Boy, 
That sounds pretty clean. Much better. Yeah, I gotta tell you, I'm really happy with the Pertronics ignition. I do believe that if I would have hooked the HEI up to the 12 volt line, I would have received different results. Just naturally would, which means that I can confirm the weak spark that I was faced with. And that seems to be better. Theoretically, the original ignition system runs on six volts, so I don't know why that one isn't performing well. Who knows, I didn't do a whole lot of testing on it, never checked it well, um, just know it wasn't quite right, and decided I didn't really want to mess with it or fight it too long. I'll keep that on the shelf, just in case the day comes that a guy needs a non-electronic ignition. I did look at some of the MSD stuff, that's pricey. I don't know if I'm worth that much. So I opted out of that one, even though it might have been kind of fun. Don't know that I need it. Not sure exactly what it would do. Um, this seems to be working amazingly well so far. So no complaints. Yeah, I'd do it again. I'd, I'd do it way sooner. Look, I did this. I do this on almost every project. I scrip and I save and I try to use parts instead of just buying the new one and then I end up paying for it on this car I reused the fuel pump I cleaned it up tested it seemed to work fine and it did I ran that fuel pump for the first little while and then one time I'm backing it out of the driveway the wife looks at me and says hey you're leaking something so I look down and see a trail of fuel everywhere that I go made me think of the cartoons where they run the gas and then somebody drops a match on it and they use it as a fuse and it blows up whatever's at the end. I didn't want to be the thing that blows up at the end of that fuse. So sure enough, the fuel pump's leaking. So I pull that fuel pump off. I go get a new one. And wouldn't you know, the new one has way too much fuel pressure. It's kicking out about eight or nine pounds. And that, that runs the risk of overpowering the float bowl valve flooding the carburetor so then I have to add a fuel pressure regulator and do you know how much harder it is to change a fuel pump when it's in this car than it would have been when the engine was still on the stand this car's not got a lot of extra room that k10 we're working on now that thing's got enough space for another like a spare engine this car you can barely fit the one that it's got That's gonna stink. I might have left just a little bit of rubber on the pavement right there. So yeah, I reused the fuel pump. I reused all the ignition parts, coil, wires, distributor. And in the end, how much of that really needed to be replaced? I don't know. Maybe the original coil, maybe replacing the coil would have been enough. Not bad. Maybe replacing the original coil would have been enough. Maybe just replacing the distributor is enough. Maybe just wiring the original coil up to 12 volts, even though I'm confident it's supposed to run on six. The stock wiring is still there. Maybe any one of those things would have fixed that problem. But rather than mess around with it, I am still running the original wires. They actually look good. And by original, I mean the wires that came with the car when I bought it. They look good, they seem fine, and now with the new parts, they seem fine as well, so that's to be confirmed. The plugs are new, the distributor is new, the coil is new, and now the wiring is confirmed to be a 12 volt supply, which was definitely part of the problem, at least when I ran that HEI. That seems to be a problem of the past and we are rocking and rolling now I have the initial timing set pretty high I'm up around 18 degrees it seems to like it right there I have not changed the stoppers in the distributor to control the mechanical advance and I think I'm probably still getting somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 22 degrees mechanical I don't know what this stock specification is but it means that I'm running probably too much total ignition it hasn't complained 
So what I aim to do right here is give it a little bit of the gas going up this hill and see if I can make the engine ping. Ping would indicate that the timing is too far advanced. So I didn't hear any ping. Maybe we're okay. It didn't gear down. Um, I kind of didn't expect it to for what it's worth because I don't have the transmission kick down cable installed. So it kept it up in the high gear. That's good for that test. It puts an additional load on the motor. I'm climbing, I'm in a high gear, and I didn't get any pain. So maybe we're okay, huh? I kind of like to have the manual transmission in here. By the same token, it's pretty convenient to have the automatic. I have no idea what rear end is in this car. I, I'm confident it's geared pretty tall, and it would probably be fun to gear it down, but I don't know that I really want to gear it down when all I have is a three-speed automatic. So if I'm going to gear it down, and I would put in some kind of a rear limited slip differential, then at that point, you pretty well have to put in a different transmission or your 60 mile an hour cruise is running at 3,000 RPM and all you do is burn the gaso fuel too fast. So I'll have to think about that one just a little bit. speedometer has a red line on it. The red line's at 70 miles an hour. <laughs> That's good to know. Well, I didn't get any stutter at all, and I pretty well put my foot to the floor. Took her up to, uh, I don't know, 75 miles an hour or thereabouts. So that fits. Much better, much better. Well, all right, I'm pretty happy with that. A little 302 in here is supposed to be producing in the neighborhood of 400 horsepower. It might be fun to go put it on the dyno one of these days. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. As long as it's fun to drive, what difference does it make what the actual horsepower is? Well, it's been real. It's been fun. It's even been real fun. But all parties must come to an end.